Oh, yes. Number one, lay in a course. For three sheets, Las Vegas. <laughs> Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. <laughs> Warning! Drinking and gambling do not mix. <laughs> You'll see more of that later, but first. Las Vegas! Home to world class flair bartenders to serve up bubbling cauldrons of bizarre cocktails. Look at this. Poofing. Where a stockpile of the finest wines on earth are here for the taking. You know what I like about wine? I like the way it makes you drunk and do silly things. That's the best part. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> And we're breaking in a $777 meal served up by a butler. It's interesting punishment to, dr to drink a $600 bottle of champagne because I burped. I'm just hoping you'll burp, burp some more. I'll check out all those things. Cool. And I'll throw a private party with some Vegas big shots inventing original martinis. This you know. is a pinky up drink. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and at some point, I managed to uh, get a shiner. Oh, what is this? When I go three sheets, Las Vegas. I arrive in Vegas late in the evening. And since this town goes 24 7, I'm thinking that instead of crashing in my hotel room, I should get warmed up for the glitz of Sin City. And what better place to do that? Then by heading up to the 51st floor of the Rio to the famed Voodoo Lounge for a little flair. A flair to me is when I wear some an outfit and I accentuate it with sparkly sparkles, yeah. ruffles, that kind of thing. But today I'm going to broaden my horizons and do flair as in breaking stuff. <laughs> Tom is a competitive flair bartender, meaning he's kind of like a flair Olympian. Now the question is... Again, please? Can I, Zane Lamprey, host of the world's best drinking show, serve it up as well as I can put him down? Do I get it? Oh, nice. Tom is going to make Voodoo Lounge's signature cocktail called The Witch Doctor. So you make it, and then I'll, I'll do the flair. I'll copy exactly what you did. <laughs> I'm pretty good. It's a funny okay. <laughs> uh, Nothing. It's interesting. Step one. Step one. Is the secret ingredient. Secret ingredient. His secret is the dry ice cube. Hey, wait. You can't consume dry ice. Professor, what's going on here? Professor Ray. The mad scientist. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. They're using dry ice for the good old fashioned mad scientist potion effect that I know and love. Dry ice is simply frozen CO2. Because it's heavier than regular ice, it sinks to the bottom of the glass. As the frozen CO2 warms, it goes through the process of sublimation, which means it converts directly from a solid to a gas, never becoming a liquid. An important cautionary note, frozen CO2 can cause frostbite, so never consume it, Zane. <laughs> okay, anyway, back in Tom's laboratory, he covers the dry ice cube with a bunch of regular ice. Then pineapple and coconut flavored rums. Raspberry rum. On the forearm. Next, peach schnapps, grenadine, white rum, and spiced rum. Oh. Takes a long time to make a drink. You got it? Yes. All right. Fill it up? Yeah. It all gets topped off with some pineapple juice and sour mix. Is that for one person? Technically, no. But you can handle it. Look at it, spoofing. Tom says there's about nine shots in it, none of which you can taste thanks to the sweeteners. Foo foo. Foo foo. Yeah, it is. See? Switch doctor. Okay, my turn. Oh, Lord. Basically, it has all the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It also has something to overpower the uh, foo foo factor. Beer. <laughs> Scotch. That's a new one. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Zane Doctor. That's a new one. Where's Christina? To get a nice, nice pull, nice, nice big check pull. The beer is a nice touch. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the pinky didn't go up because you add a little scotch and a little beer. <laughs> okay, now here's the funny thing. While Christina goes off to some dark corner to down her sane doctor, Tom and I continue to screw around behind the bar. Whoa. <laughs> Hill. My turn? Yeah, your turn. All right. It happens. Every player bartender's worst nightmare. Okay, now, I want to remind you that Tom is a world-class flair bartender. You might need to take notes. He's renowned in the business for his distinct style and his ability to perform under pressure. But today, it looks like he was thrown by the presence of greatness because he got me. Oh! oh. I'm fine. Are you? You see this? You see this? You have to, when someone's doing flair, it's probably not a good idea to stand in their vicinity. I'm gonna reenact it. Do, 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 do. You know, over here, time to think. And here comes the bottle. Here comes the bottle. It's like flying towards my face. I'm like, oh, he's gonna catch it. He's gonna catch it. He's gonna catch it. And then right about here, I'm like, yeah, I don't think he's gonna catch the bottle. I'm not gonna catch it. There we go. Oh well, I guess that's the price you pay when you host a drinking show. By the way, you know we use a lot of sound effects in this show. But for the record, this one is real. Oh! And over the course of a few minutes, it's obvious that something's growing. Which gets me wondering, Am I gonna have a shiner tomorrow morning? Oh. So, <clears throat> I'm here at the Napoleon Suite at the Paris Casino here in Las Vegas, wonderful time. Um, that's my bed right there. This, uh, this suite can be yours for, I don't think, actually it's a pretty good deal when you consider the size of the suite. It's about 20 grand. Um, this is how I roll. I don't know how you guys roll. Some of you, I'm sure, do roll like this. But maybe more in your budget, rather than $20,000, is a burger for $777. So this is my butler here, bringing my burger. Figure, this is usually what I eat for lunch. Figured I'd do it this time on television for you. Okay, coming. Oh, hi. I'm here with your triple seven. Yes, yes you are, David. Please, come in. Okay, first off, you must be wondering how a burger could possibly cost $777. Well, actually, that has something to do with the profoundly high-end bottle of Dom Perignon Rosé Champagne that comes with it. Uh, cheers. As for the burger, it has one all Kobe beef patty, caramelized onions, sliced prosciutto, French brie cheese, Australian freshwater lobster, 100-year-old balsamic vinegar on a sesame seed bun. See, I know we're in, in um, the Paris, in the Napoleon suite, and I don't know if this is French. This is good. <laughs> is that... I didn't know you knew French. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Can you get this burger? Without the champagne for less than seven seven seven? It would just be sixty-five dollars. But why would you want just the burger? I know. <laughs> we understand that, David. We're, we understand. But some of the people at home, they don't have seven hundred seventy-seven dollars kicking around. I don't know who they are. That's a shame. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they have big TVs. Hardly seems fair. It's not it's not fair. Where, they come to the Paris, where, what's the, the restaurant that they would go and get this in? It's the Burger Brasserie. The Burger Brasserie. Oh, this burger is so good. It's mm. delicious, I'm sure. Mm. Mm. Now that the Paris Hotel has helped me start my day in an upscale note. Did you want some? I think it's time to keep this high-end, high-roller thing going. That's awesome. Coming up. I meet with a world-renowned wine dude. Is it me or do you smell Smurf in there? A uh, little bit of Smurf. Okay.
Right now, I'm in Las Vegas, and I have an appointment with one of the world's premier wine experts, Rob Bigelow, right in front of the Bellagio Hotel Fountains. I'm here at the Bellagio with Master Sommelier. Yes, indeed. Uh, not just Sommelier. <laughs> <laughs> not just any old Sommelier. Master Sommelier. OK, just to be clear, there are only about 150 Master Sommeliers throughout the entire world. That means there are more people who have been in space than there are people walking the Earth who bear the official title of Master Sommelier. And believe it or not, this guy is one of four Master Sommeliers that work at the Bellagio, giving the Bellagio the highest concentration of Master Sommeliers on one property on the planet. Sommelier. 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 Perfect. Okay. He has a real name, but I'm not going to use it because his nickname is Mojo. That's it. That's it. Mojo. Not only is Mojo one of four master sommeliers here, he's also the Bellagio's wine director. And as such, he oversees a big operation. They sell more wine than any other hospitality outfit in the country. Over 5,000 different labels to choose from. For me, Mojo has narrowed down my choice to one. 1996 Chateau Clinet from Bordeaux, France. Now we're okay. decanting. We're decanting because this wine is 12 years old. It's thrown some sediment. We want to get okay. it off of the sediment. OK. The purpose of the flame is to help see into the bottle. Once Mojo sees the sediment approaching the neck, he'll stop pouring to make sure the wine in the decanter is clear. And OK, there's the sediment. OK, sediment. How did I do? Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a little closed, but we can wake it up. OK. Oh, yeah, just smell the difference now. That you get a little swirl, there's a lot more. Of, uh, mm, oh, my goodness. Cocoa, uh, blueberry, mm -hmm. smurf. And, and a little smurf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, a, and a touch of Count Chocula. Okay, this isn't a show about breakfast cereal, it's a show about drinking. Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Welcome, brother. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's good. So, got some fruit. What are you surprised about? You said, oh, wow. I'm surprised that it's drinking so well straight out of the bottle. It, okay. The decanting helped aerate it a little bit and sort of wake it up. Usually, usually you let it sit in the decanter for? A little bit, but be, because it's a 12-year-old wine, it's it's mellow, and because it's more Merlot-based, it's going to be a little more accessible. And wow, there's a lot of nuance here. That's, how that's much, really good. I was going to say, there's a considerable amount of nuances in there. Yes. If you Are you with me? Yeah. As part of Mojo's training, He's learned to examine a glass of wine and determine, among other things, the grapes used to make it, the country of origin, and its age. And now, he's about to reveal one of his many secrets. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking down, uh, and... What did, you oh, do? what did you just do with your hand, your watch? The white? Uh, What's going on? Because I can't see the wine that well holding it off the ground, but I can see it through my skin. See how there's uh, some color change there on the rim? Oh, it's sort of like brown or Yeah, it goes to sort of a garnet. Yeah. Garnet? That, Is that a color? Yeah. If we're inside, we're using white paper, but you put it against your white skin here, and you uh, can see it going from sort of a cherry yeah, red in the center to garnet on the rim. If I was in a blind tasting, that would help me identify this wine as having some age on it. Sure, you hold it like this, and it's just you can't it's very see, dark. All you see is Curtis's feet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like and, hooves <laughs> with sneakers on them. <laughs> Well, I might not be able to identify this wine just by looking at it and tasting it, but I know it's good. Made only better by the company of a cool guy with a killer instinct for good wines. Okay, it's time to leave and go do something else. That's I what that bell says. For whom the bell tolls. Oh, okay. Yeah, on to the next thing to drink. All right, later. Oh! oh holy oh, crap! All right, watch out! Oh, man. With the fountains in full effect, my palate primed with a great Bordeaux, I must be moving on. My next stop, the Blush at the Wynn, a swanky upscale nightclub where I've been ushered in through the back entrance. Before the doors open to the public at 9 p.m. to hang out with Rosine, the marketing director. I, I came in the private entrance. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And they told me that like beforehand. I'm kind of important. And now I know. I mean, I had to get the call and everything. I yeah. couldn't even walk through the back. I had to go through the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how you roll, though. Rosine says that someone who rolls like I do should order what are known here at the Blush as fresh shots. Um, it's usually with uh, vodka and fresh fruit, but it could be done with tequila, too. 
The reason they're called fresh shots is because they take fresh fruit, muddle it, and pour the muddled mixture through a strainer, yielding a clear juice, which is mixed with a shot of booze. First up, vodka with pineapple and strawberry. Salud. Oh, we say salud here in Vegas. Mm. And kill the shot. Yummy, right? Mm. Let me tell you something about that. That was amazing. How much vodka is there per fruit ratio? Um, you know what? There's more vodka than you would actually think there was. The strained fresh fruit juice is so flavorful that you can barely detect the booze. It almost tastes like a sports drink. It tastes like fresh strawberries. Now we knock back the raspberry orange vodka. That is a tasty shot. Aren't they all good? That is so good. And I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised. I was not expecting that. You know what else I wasn't expecting? Are you wearing reading glasses? I'm sorry. What the? <laughs> Have we been shooting that show this that long that you're now wearing reading glasses? You can't all of a sudden just put out, put reading glasses on. You scare the shit out of me. I thought I thought someone's grandfather had, had took and taken over this the sound mixing. <laughs> oh my god. I think the glasses make you look very studious. Now time for vodka with melon juices. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. So, how, how, how do you do? You got it. Watermelon. Got it. Very good. That's, that's the only three melons that I know. Ooh. Man, those are good. Aren't they yummy? They're amazing. Now that I've freshened up with some fresh shots. Thank you Thank very you so much. much. Thank you so much. I think it's time to ante up. I am, after all, in Vegas, baby. But why spend my time at the tables where I can bring the tables to me? in the form of a private party in a celebrity suite at the Hard Rock. I've invited some comedian friends of mine. Some gamblers. Including a fellow mojo man. Yes! The nurse has arrived! And some personal friends. Drink when you see the monkey. Oh yeah, and then there are the dealer dolls. Introducing dealer dolls. The gorgeous all-female staff of car dealers and bartenders who bring chips, tables, and know-how to your poker party. <laughs> now the question is, what happens when you take all these people and put a car table in the room while shooting a show about drinking? Coming up, we invent some killer martinis. This is uh, the Katrina, because it'll completely f***ing destroy you. <laughs> right now, I'm playing cards in a celebrity suite at the Hard Rock in Vegas with some friends, including champion card player Bill Locke. You drink when you are actually gambling? The answer is this, very rarely, but when enough people are drinking that I can enjoy myself and still have extreme eggs. In honor of three sheets, Phil has graciously agreed to concede some extreme edge. Phil's got three drinks. Why don't you have any? And get his drink on. But not just any drink, because we're creating some true originals tonight. This is the, the Phil, Phil Lacatini. It's really just an apple martini with a splash of pineapple. It's all about the apple flavor genre. This you know? is a pinky up drink. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Have a martini with a special bite. Yeah, here's Mark, Mark, ha Mark has an interesting martini. Okay, talk about it. Kick it. It's uh, the Katrina, because it'll completely f***ing destroy you. <laughs> it's made with Absolute uh, New Orleans, which is a special edition Absolute, and a, a portion of the proceeds go to uh, Gulf Coast families. Wait, so every time somebody orders one of those? Yeah, a little bit of your buzz goes to help someone else. <laughs> I love That's that. That's right. Whoa, what the f*** is that? That's so nasty! Dirty cop! Nasty! That, that is a dirty cop. It's a nasty, dirty... What's in that, dude? Bacon you didn't tell me we were going to pissing off. Bacon, it's orange, dude! <laughs> it's little orange juice. It's orange juice and vodka with a piece of bacon in it. Do you, ta do you, do you taste the bacon? I can smell it, yes. For those of you who want a drink that actually tastes good, Joey B's got something for you. What is it? J-O-E-K-I-N-G. This is a Joe King. Right. Wow. Yeah. I love one of the Joe Kings. That's right. It's espresso, vanilla vodka, and cream liqueur. I got no, I got the antenna. Yeah. I'm joking. The Joe King is a hit. <laughs> Put it right here, right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got my own personal Joe King, yeah. But I got a little something up my sleeve. Boom, the Zantini. It's half cognac. Any cognac will do. 
but the champagne needs to be a brute, it needs to be dry. Go to your local pub and ask for a Zantini. If you don't get beat up, you'll enjoy yourself. Catch up to Phil. One thing is for sure here. I'm nurse, nurse. Everyone is thoroughly enjoying themselves. Oh my God, coffee, vodka, sugar. And nobody seems to be paying attention to the card game. Proving Phil's theory that drinking and gambling don't mix. If the drawstring to your hoodie falls into your drink, don't waste it. Get the juice of life. While Phil and the rest of us suck down on the juice of life. I couldn't help myself, I couldn't help myself. We fail to notice that one quiet player in the corner is focused quietly vying for a chance to win a card game against the big boys at the poker world. I love Jim the Cup. Tell him, you can tell I me. love Jim the Cup. Tell but Jim the Cup, you did. Yes, he may have lost a chugging contest or two. I would not like to be you. There seem to be a lot of cops that are unhappy with you. Maybe you should move to Canada. Yes, he may have a beer-spilling foul named after him. So from this day forward, Whenever someone spills beer on themselves while chugging, it will be said that they gin the cup. You know what? But despite that, thanks in part to Phil's willingness to forego extreme edge, Jim the cop takes home bragging rights to victory in our not so sober card tourney. Wow, I drank, I spent money, I gambled. My husband's oh, cute when he gets drunk. But this Vegas weekend is still missing something. Something you can only do in Vegas. So I think I'll beam out of here. What the hell? <laughs> and beam into an out of this world ceremony. All right, you guys, take your station. Jim, Jim the Romulan. Jimmy Lynn. <laughs> Jimmy Lynn. Get rid of your glass. <laughs> That's right, people. The next morning, we hit the Las Vegas Hilton Star Trek The Experience Museum because nothing beats a hangover First like time, saying I love you, you, Klingon style. With fire and steel did the gods forge the Klingon heart. It's a full-on, authentic Klingon vow renewal ceremony. You may kiss your bride. He's a Wow, that's good Bajoran. <laughs> what a trip. I got a black eye. I could have been Steve McKenna. Might have to be me. Drank champagne. Go back. If I go back to work. I think I just might. Thanks. Had some fruity shots. That is tasty shot. And wine. You like that? You have that behind you right now? Then I got my butt kicked in poker under the influence of many Zantinis. And my wife still <laughs> loves me. That's it? Not like a make out or anything like that? <laughs> Come here, Jim. Jim the cop. <laughs> Las Vegas, <laughs> where everything is done with a little flair. Oh. Wow, that's good Romulan ale. Available at the Hilton Star Trek and the Experience. Star Trek and the Experience. <laughs> 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 Number one, shoot them! <laughs>